thanks so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you. Excited to be here. Awesome. Well, you know, your, your title of this webinar is from Dr Mar Marketing Director to Cloud Security Engineer. So I know a lot of people are curious about how that journey is, how that journey has happened. So let's just back up though and start from the beginning. What were you doing before you joined the cybersecurity? What was your life looking like, your career looking like? So before I joined information security, I had been working as a marketing and sales professional for about the better part of the previous decade, leading up until the pandemic. And when the pandemic started, my marketing job was one of the first to go. So I learned some very valuable lessons then and there that maybe marketing wasn't the most recession proof uh, career to be in and with uh, the way things were shaping up, I knew I had to make a change. Honestly, I feel like so many people were in that same boat um, with COVID. I think that really put a lot of things in, into perspective. And so I think a lot of people can relate to that. So you said that you knew that you wanted to make the change. So how did you come across cybersecurity? How did that even pop in your brain? And you were like, oh yeah, this is what I want to do. How did I come across cybersecurity? Well, I've, I've always known about cybersecurity and I've always had an interest in it. I really had no idea that I could even make the transition into this field. Um, it wasn't really until my wife was evaluating boot camps for herself that it came down to Evolve Security Academy or Dev Bootcamp, which was uh, a more software engineering focus. And she ultimately went the web dev route but when she brought up the academy, it was just like it clicked for me. I could do this too. And watching her career as a software developer and how incredible the transformation it was for her to go the bootcamp route into web dev, it really wasn't until that point that I realized I could do it too. I love that. I think um, so many people have those doubts in the beginning, you know, in an in industry that you have no idea. You're like, I can't do this. But then you look a little bit more into it and you're like, wait, why can't I? I love that. That's great. Um, and so before we talk about your transition, because I know that's like what everyone really wants to know about, what are you doing right now? What's your job title? Um, what's your career looking like now? Right now, I'm a cloud security engineer for a MSSP my day-to-day -day looks really different depending on what day it is and what's currently the most important and urgent thing but on any given day i might be creating cloud alerts or dashboards i might be integrating different cloud services into our armor point scene tomorrow i could be upgrading the infrastructure you know it, it all really just depends on uh what's that most important and what's that most urgent thing on that given day. Because we have, I think somewhere around 400 security clients as part of our, of our MSSP. So it's never a dull day. It's always something different uh, and it's always something interesting. So I, I love it. That's awesome. Everything that you just mentioned, I'm sure you didn't know before you even joined the industry. So um, can you talk a little bit about your transition? You know, we can dive deep into this. Um, what was that experience like? You went through the boot camp. Did you have challenges? Did you, were you like, oh, this is what I want to do? Like, can you talk a little bit about like you, how you were feeling during this, the transition experience? Yeah. So when I was first getting started, the, the biggest challenge for me was learning the foundational IT networking uh, concepts as that's pretty much the most important thing to have mastered getting into this field. You really do need to understand at a granular level how data is moving between devices in a network because understanding how data is moving between devices in a network, how it could be exploited, how it's vulnerable, all of that is kind of the bedrock of, of understanding as a security professional what do I need to do to make sure that that data is protected, whether it's in transit or at rest? Definitely. And so what made you, just, there's so many different things that you can do in the industry. What made you decide to go down this route specifically? Like when you were going through the boot camp, were you 
did you have an idea of what you wanted to do at the end or did you you know explore a bunch of different areas and then you kind of ended up in this direction yeah when I was first starting out I didn't really have an end goal in mind in fact I kind of had no clue what I was going to do I knew I was interested in this field I knew there were really great opportunities here but the initial outset it was a decision between do I want to focus on the defense or the offensive side of the equation and a, a lot of the peers that I was working with uh, were really interested in trying to get into the more offensive side of the industry. And I thought that stuff was really cool. But when I looked at the statistics, there were a lot more defensive or blue team roles that were hiring as opposed to the offensive, the red team side. So I, I knew that getting into this industry, it would be a little bit challenging, but my best shot would be starting on the defensive side. And, uh, and that's exactly where I started. I started as a security analyst for the same MSSP that I'm, I'm working for today. Uh, so it's kind of cool to be back here doing cloud security stuff now. Uh, it feels like it's coming full circle for me. Definitely. And I, I mean, that was such a smart and strategic way to pick your career path. Um, you know, you look at all the openings and you're like, you know, the, this keeps coming up. And so I, I do want to talk a little bit about the job search itself because you can't just, you know, jump into um, a career without going through that. And I know that the job search is extremely daunting to a lot of people. So if you could talk about your experience a little bit, um, what was the job search like for you and what advice do you have for people who are currently going through the job search in the industry? So my job search experience was very hit or mess. Uh, getting started mostly mess. It's especially getting that first job in the industry. I felt like I was grilled in every interview. And then if I was lucky enough to make it to the technical interview, grilled even further. And uh, I definitely bombed a lot of technical interviews on my path to landing that first job. And, you know, I had been in sales before, so I don't take rejection personally. You just got to keep moving forward to the next one. You know, what is it that you didn't understand the first time that you need to have a better understanding to answer that question the next time it's asked to you? It wasn't until that I was given the opportunity to take a, a take home technical exam that I really excelled because memorizing every single port and number and memorizing every single word soup acronym by memory that's kind of challenging to me but what I, I learned at the academy that was really helpful getting started in my career and pretty much everything I've done since was how to find answers to tough questions how to troubleshoot things that there isn't a immediate answer to I learned those skills at Evolve and they serve me really well um, not just getting that first job, but everything that I've done since. That's great. Um, I love that you were able to take the experience from the boot camp and um, bring it over into your into your interviews and and what you're doing now. I mean, that's really what we what we do here at the academy. Um, and so, do you, along with the job search, do you have any advice for people like how how you get your foot in the door? Yeah, how to get your foot in the door. Um, is definitely a, a challenging thing for a lot of folks. And the first thing that I would say right off the bat is don't apply to, to job postings where you don't know somebody that works there. Because if they have a job posting and 100, um, conservatively, 100 people apply for that job and you don't have somebody internally in that organization that can vouch for you, can talk to their, their friends in the organization, it's really, it's really difficult. I mean, unless you happen to have something really unique and special that none of the other candidates have, you're going to get overlooked. I, I've found throughout every job that I've landed that not just knowing the IT networking fundamentals, but having a network myself of people who were looking out for me in their network, were aware of opportunities and were letting me know about those opportunities and recommending for me to apply, that was really make or break for my job search. I know a lot of folks put a little bit too much stock into those job postings where they don't know somebody 
And I feel like, at least from my experience, for me, that was a dead end. It wasn't really until I started leveraging the power of my own personal network that my job search excelled. I couldn't agree more. I th- and I think this goes for any industry across the board. You have to network and grow your personal network because you never know what's going to happen down the line. The more that you grow your personal network, the more people you'll know and you know maybe you'll land a job from that. So I think that's great advice to not stop networking. Um, and so we've talked about your transition and now you've been working, how long have you been working in the industry itself? Like how long is, have you had uh, since your first job till now? Let's, let's say I've been in the industry about three, four years. Okay. That, that, yeah, that sounds accurate, depending okay. on, on when you want to start it. But yeah, three, four right. years. That's awesome. So you, you definitely are familiar with it enough now. And so I want to ask a question about the cybersecurity industry overall. Like, what would you say is your favorite part about working in the industry? And then what would you say is probably like the most challenging part? Not that you dislike it, but just like the most challenging. Okay, so my favorite part about working in the industry and the most challenging part about working in the industry. Let's start with my favorite part. Um, My favorite part is the people. The people are amazing. Every InfoSec professional that I've met has been really phenomenal, starting with my time at Evolve Security Academy. Many of those same people I'm still talking to to this day. I've also met a lot of really phenomenal folks through Burbsec which if you happen to be local to Chicagoland, we meet every month. Uh, There's different meetings depending geographically where you are in Chicagoland. Really great place to to meet fellow information security professionals. The people have to be my favorite. Um, Everybody's so interesting and everybody's come from a really unique background that adds something different and something special to the soup that is all of us information security professionals. So people by far is is my favorite part of of the industry. Um, Let's talk about some of the more challenging things. I I think the heart of what is the most challenging thing in the industry itself is that a lot of people who may not be working in information security directly, but perhaps maybe they're overseeing it, they see information security as a cost and not an investment. And I feel like sometimes that leads organizations to make the wrong decisions if they think information security is a cost and not an investment. You know, perhaps you're running your team a little leaner than than they should be to adequately oversee all of the things that you have going on in your environment. In fact, to that point, for challenges of the industry, I talk to a lot of folks in security operations across the world, but also the United States in particular, and almost every security operations team that I'm speaking to is telling me that their team is understaffed and a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, We really do need more people in the industry. We need more people on the front line of security operation centers across America and the world for that matter. And uh, until, until the general consensus is that security is an investment, not, not a cost, I, I think we'll still continue to run into that challenge. I think that's great insight. Um, I think especially for people who aren't quite in the industry, knowing both the challenges and what's super exciting about it and what you love, like the people, like you were saying, um, I think it's really advantageous insight for those people. Um, And I love how you say that you love the people because I completely agree. I think the people are super helpful. Everyone's wanting to help each other. Um, So, and especially at, at our boot camp, we, you know, we grow a community here. So I love that. Um, We have time for a couple more questions here. Um, This is something that I'm curious about because we're constantly getting questions from our students um, about this when they first start their journeys. What do you deal with imposter syndrome at all? And if you do, how do you overcome that? Because I know that is a struggle for a lot of people, especially those who weren't in the industry before, but they're, they're good enough, but it just, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Imposter syndrome 
how do I deal with that a day at a time? It, everybody has it. Even, even people who have been in this industry for decades from my conversations that I've had struggle with it too, because there's no way to master everything in information security. There's, there's just too much. All you can really do is your best. And I have found a lot of success in, I guess I would call it learn, do, and then teach. To teach something is, in my opinion, the highest form of mastery in anything. So throughout my career, I, I always, I try to start off by learning, then doing it, and then until I can teach it, then I start feeling a little bit more competent. But even, even then, things change so fast and so quickly. There's something new every day, just a day at a time. And just know that if you're struggling with imposter syndrome, chances are everyone, everyone else is too. There are very few people, I think, that don't. And I also think that if you think you know everything, that's probably a really dangerous assumption to be making too, because what could be today might not be tomorrow. I think that's great advice. Like always wanting to learn and just day at a time. I, I think that's great. Um, and so our last question here for you, Alex, any really just any last words you wanna say, any final advice for people looking to get into the industry, if they're considering a boot camp, anything really for um, that you just want to share from the wisdom that you've learned over your past four years in the industry? Yeah, I've had a lot of really interesting experiences over the years. And if there is one thing that I want to share with your audience, it's that don't give up. Just keep moving forward. There, there are going to be countless times where you're in a feel blocked or stuck um but you just you got to do the best that you can every day and just try to make a difference try to make meaningful progress and meaningful progress depending on what where you currently are and what your ambitions are it's going to be different from for everyone but make take a difficult thing a difficult task or goal and break it up into smaller parts what individual steps do you need to take to accomplish that goal or that task that you have? Because having a really big and difficult challenge ahead of you, you can feel paralyzed with something like that on your shoulders. But if you break it down into the individual components that you would need in order to solve that challenge or accomplish that goal, it becomes way easier just to chip away at it a day at a time, one small task at a time. I love it. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, you seem to have so much wisdom and we couldn't be more thankful that you're sharing it with us. Um, we had one question come in. What was the name of the cybersecurity meetup group in Chicago that you were talking about? Yes, it's BurbSec, B-U-R-B, like suburb, and then SEC, like security, BurbSec. Google us. We meet up every month. Um, it's depending on where you live. There's a different meetup that's geographically close to hopefully where you're living. Um, and the people that I've met through BurbSec have been really wonderful and fantastic. I'm kind of kicking myself that I, I didn't go hang out uh, with my BurbSec friends sooner. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so easy to get caught up in a goal or a task or ambition that you have and, and completely overlook the let's all put that to the side and just grab a drink and talk shop and you know what are you experiencing you really got you really got to step away from your computer screen every once in a while and just talk to people it's so cathartic yeah that's great advice you got to reconnect alex thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today um we really really appreciate it and we love having you back um, and to everyone in the in, in attending the webinar thank you so much for coming and have a great weekend everyone